Hi. In this video, I really want to talk about Windows Azure auto scale capabilities, with the ability to scale a service kind of up or down. And there's different types of service available in Azure. There's platform as a service, software as a service, for things like Office 365, and then there's infrastructure as a service. Now, if I'm using platform as a service, I write my application a certain way so it can run in the Azure PaaS space. I don't really have to worry too much about the scale. I can figure how big I want my application to grow to, but Azure will automatically add instances and remove them as needed. If I'm using software as a service, Office 365, I don't care how the fabric takes care of providing my service. I have a certain service level agreement, I'm guaranteed a certain service, and it's up to that provider to get me that service. I don't care. The infrastructure service is different. That's basically VMs in the cloud. And if I want scale, I have to do a bit more work to get that. Now there's really two ways we can do scale. There's scale out. I add additional instances of the environment. There's scale up. I make the environment bigger. I give it more CPU, more memory. And in Azure, we focus on scale out. We want to add instances. Now the way we do that is in the basic infrastructure of the service, there's no way for Azure to have a template and it just adds additional instances. Um, we can kind of do that when we get to resource groups and JSON-based templates in kind of the new portal, new capabilities. But if we look at the Azure portal today and look at scale, what it's actually built around is kind of the following. The idea is I, I have my cloud service. And what I'm going to do is I have to pre-create the virtual machines. I have to go and create VM1. I create VM2. I create VM3, etc. I pre-create all of them. I install the software. If it's a web server, I install IIS. I have to do all of the creation. The next thing I have to do is I place them in something called an availability set. So I'm putting in that availability set. And what an availability set does is imagine I have the Azure fabric. And really, at the end of the day, the Azure fabric consists of lots and lots and lots of racks of servers. There's a top of rack switch. And I can think about each rack is kind of a fault domain. Same could go wrong with the rack, with the top of rack switch. So that's a fault domain. And so if I'm going to add lots of instances of a service, what I want to ensure is they don't all get created on the same rack, the same fault domain. So by putting VMs in an availability set, what it guarantees is it will split them over two fault domains. So it may have VM1 here, VM2 here, and VM3 here. So I'm guaranteed even if a rack fails or if it's planned maintenance, I'm still going to have some instances available. And that's why I never want to mix different workloads in the same availability set. Let's say I mixed IIS and SQL and DCs in one availability set. Well, all the DCs could end up on one node. All the IIS could end up on the other. It's not guaranteeing each VM goes in its own fault domain. It's just guaranteeing that it will split all of the VMs among two fault domains, two racks. So I want to have different availability sets for each workload. One for IIS, one for domain controllers, one for SQL, etc. But this is what that availability set does is it provides a guarantee that it would split my workloads over multiple fault domains. So now what I've done is I've created my availability set. I've got my VMs in that availability set. And now what I can do in Azure is I can enable at the cloud service level, I can select the availability set and say, I want to turn on auto scale. And when I do that, I tell it which availability set. And I kind of tell it what the range is, how many VMs I want to be able to shrink down to how many I want to grow to. And I can say I want to do it based on the average CPU utilization of each of the VMs that are currently running. So let's say it exceeds 80%, then I need to go and turn on some of the additional ones. If it drops below a certain amount, maybe I can turn some off. I can do it based on a, a queue depth. If the queue depth goes so high, start up another instance. And I actually configure a number of things. And I'm going to go through this in the next part when I show the example. I can figure out well, how many do I increment by and how many should I decrement by. I, do I add one VM at a time or do I add three or four VMs at a time? Again, adding is the wrong word. It's not creating them, it's just turning them on or off. 
And when it turns them off, it actually deprovisions it from the fabric, so I stop paying for it. And so in the auto scale, I can figure how many to increment by when it hits that certain size, uh, CPU utilization QDEP, and how many to shrink by when it drops below a certain number. I also say, how long should it wait between the actions? I don't want it to evaluate and then decide to add two VMs and then 30 seconds later, check again and decide to add two more. It takes time for these VMs to be provisioned into the fabric I started up. So maybe I want to wait 10 minutes between each sampling. I want to wait 10 minutes before I decide to check again and do some more actions. 10 minutes before I try to shrink them down. So I configure that as part of the auto scale configuration. How many I turn on at a time, how many I turn off at a time, and how long I want to wait between each set of actions. Now all auto scale is doing is controlling, turning them on or off. I, I stop paying for them because it's going to deprovision it from the fabric. I'm still responsible to work out, well, if I'm a client, how do I know which ones are running? What do I do? So I'd use things like load balancing. If this was a web server, I would create an Azure load balancer, maybe on the, the VIP cloud service virtual IP. If it's an internal, I can do internal load balancing. And that load balancer can actually go and probe, well, is this available? Is it responding? If it is, I'll add it to those that I point customers, clients to. If it's not, then I won't point them. So remember, I want to pair this up with something else to actually direct the traffic to them. So it's important you have some balancing technology in use. And I'll, I'll show the load balancing part as well. Now, what about scale up? Uh, okay, I don't want to do this. I don't want to pre-create, I have to pre-create all of these. I don't want to pre-create 30 VMs. Um, I want it to just get bigger. The type of service I has doesn't do this scale thing. I want it to get bigger. So Azure Auto Scale doesn't do that. And there's a pretty good reason for that. If you think about each of these VMs is a certain size, an A1, an A2, two CPUs, four CPUs, certain amount of memory. We can't dynamically change the size of a VM. If I want to change it, basically it has to deprovision it from the Azure fabric, i.e. it kind of gets removed, and then it may get put back on a completely different server. Remember, the servers are only a certain size. If I make a VM from two CPUs to eight CPUs, it may have to move it to a different server completely. So there's a big outage of time there. And so it doesn't do that. I could write my own stuff. I could absolutely write some PowerShell. I could write an Azure automation that goes and checks well, how utilized is this um, VM. If it is, I'm going to deprovision it and make it a bigger size. But obviously, there's an outage of the server service when I do that. So that's kind of why that, that's kind of not done by default. But if you were desperate to do the scale up instead of scale out, I could write an Azure automation, which is PowerShell workflows running in Azure, to do that for me. So that's kind of the high level overview. Hopefully it kind of makes sense. I have to pre-create all the VMs. I put them in an availability set. At the cloud service level, I configure the availability set to do the scale. When it doesn't need VMs, it shuts them down and deprovisions them. So I it'll say stop deprovision, so I'm not paying for it. And then it will start them as it needs to and stop them as it doesn't need them anymore. So with that, let's actually go and look at this in action in an environment. So just looking at this test environment, I have a particular cloud service. And in that, I went ahead and created two virtual machines. Now, I've only got two in this. Normally, if this was a larger scale, I would maybe create 10, 20, 50 VMs. But this shows the idea. So I have two basic VMs that I've installed IIS into. If I go and look at one of these virtual machines, and I go and look at the configuration, you'll see I made it part of an availability set. So I created an availability set called IIS, and into it, I added these two virtual machines. So they would be distributed over those two fault domains. To actually configure the auto scale, I would actually go back to the cloud service properties. And I have the scale tab. And what this will do, it will show me the various availability sets I have defined within the cloud service. And I can now go ahead and I could set up a schedule for when I actually want the scaling to take effect. And then I would actually go ahead and say, well, what is the metric I want to use for the scale? By default, no auto scale is used, but I could actually perform scaling based on the CPU utilization. And what this shows me is how many instances 
do I want available running within this availability set? So I only have two VMs, so I can only go from one to two. If I had 20, I could maybe say, well, go from five to 20. Maybe I don't want to use all 20, go to five to 15. And then I tell it, well, what is the target CPU range I want? So this is the average utilization across the various instances that are running. So in this case, if it went above 80, it would then scale up, in my case, by one instance at a time. And after it performs a scale action, it's gonna wait 20 minutes before it does another scale action. That gives it enough time to start up the additional instance, maybe low balancing to detect, for example, that's now running, to see if it makes enough difference. I don't wanna do them too quickly, because as I already said in sort of the whiteboarding part, if I only wait 30 seconds and then try again, well, it wouldn't have finished starting up. So I'm gonna make more scale decisions based on things that haven't even had a chance to take effect yet but I can change all the way down to five minutes if I wanted to. Likewise, I can say, well, if the CPU average drops below, let's say 60%, then I can scale down by one, two, five at a time. And again, how long do I wait between those scale down times? Because the reason I'm using this in the first place is I only want the number of VMs running that I need to deliver a certain quality of service. Because I only pay for VMs when they're provisioned. And so I do want to make sure I set this to a reasonable value. I don't want to set it too low because it will never stop any VMs. I want to say, look, I want them all used at least 60%. If they're not, I can probably afford to shut some down and therefore let Azure deprovision them from the Azure fabric and I stop paying. Likewise, I can do it based on queue depth. So I get the same scale up, scale down, but this time it's going to actually be based on the actual items in the queue. And that's really all there is. Again, I can set up times for where I want the different scalings to take effect. Maybe during the day, I want everything running. Maybe at night and at weekend, I would do different types of scaling. And that's really all there is to it. Again, it's very common to use the CPU. The range I want running out of all the VMs in the availability set. And then my target range of CPU and how long I wait before I perform another scale action and how many I increment and decrement by when I do perform that scale action. Now remember as well, I likely would want something else to load balance. So this is just starting and stopping resources. I actually need to also be able to have clients directed to the traffic. So for example, in this IIS world, if I look at the instances, I look at my online VMs, if I look at its endpoints, I actually have a HTTP endpoint defined and that's a load balance set. So I actually have both of those virtual machines defined in there and then it uses its own probes to go and detect and route the traffic accordingly. If I actually go, for example, and say edit this, I can see the load balance set. If I say reconfigure, then I can see what I'm doing. I'm using TCP, I'm probing on port 80, checking every 15 seconds, and then the VMs are actually part of that load balance set. And so now, now distribute the traffic between whichever VMs are running. I just need to make sure that my affinity set effectively has the same VMs in it that I'm putting the load balance set. So as VMs start in that availability set, they've also mentioned this load balance set, so traffic will get forwarded accordingly. Again, that's just one method. You don't have to use load balancing. There may be something else specific to how you actually want to leverage the VMs as they stop and start using the auto scale. But at a high level, that's really all I have to do. I create all the VMs in advance. I put them in an availability set and then I configure the auto scale at the cloud service level. And this completes this little walkthrough of auto scale in infrastructure as a service in Azure. Thank you.